whoa, whoa, oh boy, that's the way to start a vlog today. Holy mo dropping everything. Uh, hey, everybody, thanks for tuning in to Spaz 24 7. I am doing a live vlog today. Actually, this light's a little bright. Let's, let's fix the light a little bit. Oh boy. All right, all right. Move the camera a little bit. There we go. Uh, doing a live vlog today because uh, I haven't had a chance to edit. Uh, I've been busy trying to get all my work done because we are off to Orlando to go to Disney World uh, this weekend because uh, we wanted to be able to do the Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party. Uh, and in order to be able to do that, uh, we were only able to do a quick trip because we're going back down in November for uh, the Food and Wine Half Marathon, which I've been training hard for, as you know in some of the vlogs. Uh, I've been running, doing six miles, uh, and I'm working my way up to get to that 13.1. I'm not quite there yet, but I'm getting close. But what I wanted to do, I'm actually trying to charge the phone while we do this. Uh, what I wanted to do was a quick little Disneyland haul video of all the cool souvenirs that we got from Disneyland. And this is going to be in no particular order in which we picked it up. Uh, but I thought, hey, let me share with some cool little uh, merch that we got. Uh, first thing I want to show you guys is, actually, I'll, I'll show you the first thing that we actually got because uh, I thought it was really cool. And that is the Cars Land uh, postcard. Greetings from Radiator Springs. We had so much fun in Cars Land. It is so awesome. Uh, if you get to go to California Adventure, Cars Land is worth the park hopper ticket because it is incredible. Uh, Radiator Springs Racers is kind of like Test Track over at uh, Epcot, but so much better. The storyline, the being able to see all the characters from Cars, and it's, it's, I feel like it goes faster, even though it probably doesn't, but it was such a great ride. Uh, so I wanted to have a little keepsake to hang up here in the office, uh, and I thought I could I have a little frame, uh, so I... Uh, I'm hanging up the uh, postcard. Uh, another thing that we had to get uh, is our Starbucks You Are Here mug. And this is the Disneyland one. Uh, so I was like, I've got to keep the collection going. Uh, so this is the, this is the mug uh, from Disneyland. We didn't get one from California Adventure. I think if we go back, we'll, we'll get one. But... Um, we definitely need one from Disneyland since we have Magic Kingdom. Actually, the only other one that we don't have of at least the the Disney stuff that we've been to is Animal Kingdom. We still don't have one from Animal Kingdom. That needs to happen. Maybe not this trip. Maybe in the November trip we'll, we'll, we'll haul that home. Uh, but I do have some other things. Let me... From Cars Land as well, uh, when we went to the Cozy Cone and had some really delicious popcorn. They do flavored popcorn. Also, we were able to have the chili queso cone. That was really good. Actually, really, 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 really good. Uh, so, uh, I wanted to get one of these. Uh, they have different colors. Uh, red, blue. They were out of the green, so I went with the red. Um, more traditional oil can. So, this is your straw. You get the drink out of it. Um, but I wanted to have this for the, uh, the collection because this is just really, really cool. Um, I think I'm going to use it as a piggy bank. I'm going to hide money in there so Tanya can't find it. I know she's not going to watch this, so I know I'm okay to say that. She can't hear me. <laughs> she's yelling, I can hear you! No. Uh, another cool thing that I got was over at the Polynesian, uh, had my Dole Whip in this really cool little Polynesian uh, mug kind of thing. And I might use this to put some change in as well around the office. Uh, I just thought it was really cool. Uh, maybe have some ice cream in it at some point. I don't know. I It was it was $2 more to get the cup. I'm, I'm, I'm a sucker when it comes to souvenir cups, mugs, popcorn buckets. That's my, that's my weakness, guys. I'm a sucker. I am going to pay the upcharge and get the souvenir thing. Uh, also, uh, one of the things that we got, I did get a Disneyland t-shirt. This is pretty cool. Um, part of the reason I liked this one was because it had Cal the, the California on there and the little, you know, uh, Sleeping Beauty's Castle. Um, and plus it's blue. 
I look really good in blue. Uh, so that was really cool. And uh, I haven't worn it yet. I need to figure out an occasion to wear my my T-shirt. Uh, and as you know, that I love my uh, my Disney pins. Got my park bag all ready to go. Uh, and one of the new ones that we I added to my park band was a Disneyland 2017 pin. Uh, I just wanted to be able to have something that showed that we went to Disneyland on my park bag when we go to the Magic Kingdom. And the other thing we did, uh, we didn't do it on. The, the Saturday, but we ended up doing it on the Monday, Labor Day, before we left, was we went to uh, Ghirardelli uh, and had, on, on Sunset Strip, and there is the El Capitan uh, theater, movie theater, um, and they're kind of connected, and so to kind of remember that part of our trip, I got the, uh, the uh, button pin here, uh, I put that on my park bag. That's pretty cool. Um, they do a whole bunch of special pins. So those people out in California get a lot of special pins there from uh, the th movie between the movie theater and, and Ghirardelli, uh, which, by the way, I had twice on this trip, which I probably shouldn't have had any, uh, but I end up having uh, in San Diego and in, in L.A. So <sighs> they get me. They get me every time. Love ice cream. That's my weakness. Weakness, summertime and ice cream and corn of the cob. There you go. Summertime is those things. Uh, and so those were the, that was kind of my small Disney haul. We didn't go crazy, uh, partly because we knew we were going um, to the, down to Orlando in a couple, of, at that point, a week later, pretty much. Uh, so uh, we didn't want to go too crazy. Uh, now, I will tell you, I have some things earmarked for when we're at the Mickey's Not-So-Scary Halloween Party and the Food and Wine Festival. Um, no, you didn't miss much. Uh, thanks for tuning in. How's everything in Kansas City? Uh, are your are your Royals going to uh, make the playoffs? Are they going to make a run, play my Yankees? What do you think? I think I think my Yankees uh, might have a really good shot of making it to the next round if they have to play Minnesota. But uh, uh, kind of just did my my Hall stuff. Yeah, I think they I think the Royals are a wild card team. Um, they definitely have a chance of, of making the wild card. Um, they got they got good players. That's really the you know. Now the question is what happens to the Royals after this year? Because I have a feeling like Hosmer, I think he's gone. I think he's going someplace. Um, he's gonna get signed somewhere else. And I think some of those other players too. Uh, they got a lot of free agents. So, uh, and by deciding not to trade them, you could make the playoffs, but you're gonna lose. Uh, and Moose, uh, yeah, you, you think Haas is staying? I, I think I think they're both gone. Um, you know, I. I don't know. It's gonna. It's the off season's gonna be very interesting compared to last off season where there wasn't a lot of players. Um, Salvi's gonna stay too. Well, if you guys could keep the team together, you have a you have the makings of a, of a couple of more years of some playoff baseball. You just got got off to a really bad start in April, and that just kind of killed your season. And then you had those injuries come in, and uh, and but now you guys are playing some great baseball. No one's playing better baseball right now than the Cleveland Indians. 21 wins in a row. 21 wins in a row. That's that not losing in three weeks in baseball. That is ridiculous. That is just beyond ridiculous. Um, but great for them. Go go try. Go try. That's uh, yeah. Well, you do have some players, uh, you know, that uh, um, that are in the in the pipeline that can come up as well. Um, Vargas, I mean, I think Vargas might, you know, stick around because um, I think he's only on a one-year deal there. Um, so he might stick around. He might uh, – and, and just, you know, Jason Vargas actually pitched here in Greensboro uh, my first year working for the Grasshoppers. And um, I just remember um, there was a rehab game late in the season. Um, and uh, – or a rehab – it was a game late in the season where – uh, Colorado would play in, um, which would be Asheville. So the Rockies sent down this major leaguer for a rehab start. And uh, he, him, this major leaguer, and Vargas pitched against each other. And the total game time was an hour and 20 minutes for nine innings. They And, and we won like one nothing. One guy hit a home run in the eighth inning off the off the major league guy on, in rehab start. 
it would there was I think between the, the two of them like four or five six pitch innings. I mean they lit, there was a, there was a literally two innings where twelve pitches were thrown and that was it. I mean that was it was the game was so fast. I was so tired because I was doing promotions on this side of the field. And I, I was barely getting to where I needed to be after finishing one promotion. Like oh, innings over, time to do a promotion. I'm like we just we I just got here. So yeah, it was it was a crazy game to watch and um, but a lot of a lot of fun. Um, but that yeah, so um, a lot of a lot of players now that have come through Greensboro are scattered around the, the major leagues. Um, I mean Tampa Bay has a couple uh, with uh, Logan Morrison um, played played in Greensboro, um, and then of course the, the Marlin guys that came through. Oh, the the fur babies. Uh, Bailey is right here by me. Uh, she's she's right here. Let's see if I can I'll point the camera down. There's Bailey. Hey Bailey, you're on camera. Are you happy about that? Probably not. Uh, and Koa is in the bedroom uh, chewing on a bone. So. Uh, which we won't describe, distract him because he is just crazy uh, when he gets around his bone. But uh, the other thing I wanted to show you guys that I just got um, now I, I haven't really used this a lot, but I did get a GoPro, which I'm pretty excited about. I'm still still getting used to it, um, partly because uh, yeah, uh, yeah, but he is cute. He's very cute. I'm still getting used to the. Um, the uh, GoPro um, and and downloading it, working into the vlogs. But one of the things that I was told by some people that you know the GoPro GoPro is all about the accessories. And one of the things that um, I was told was order some of the packages that they have, which are kind of knockoff GoPro accessories to see which ones you like and which ones you want to upgrade. This way, you're not always buying like a twenty dollar. $30 uh, piece. So I got this cool Merc kit off of Amazon. It came in today, uh, but since I really didn't vlog much, because again, we're off to Disney World uh, tomorrow or tomorrow night. Now we're going to drive down a little bit and then uh, we're really in the park Friday, Saturday, coming back Sunday. That's about nine hours, and I'm assuming with stops and stuff, if we were to go straight through, it'd be about nine hour, nine and a half hours. Uh, but this this kit, look at look at everything that is in this kit. And with my Prime shipping, which was free, um, I, I got all this. 50 pieces. Now, granted, some things are small, like little tab things, and there's three of those or whatever. But the thing is, for 20 bucks, pretty much any any kind of the chest strap, the wrist strap, the head strap, the 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 floaty uh, thing for the pool, uh, tripods. You know, um, there's also a cool, this is another cool thing. This this clip right here, this is a clip, as you can see right there, clips onto your backpack so you can walk, go hiking or whatever, and uh, you don't have to carry it, right? That's a great deal. So now the cool thing is I'll get to try all this stuff out, and the things that I like and that I use a lot with the GoPro, I'll end up probably upgrading from the, you know, the cheaper version to like a more sturdier not so uh, more GoPro y type things. But I'm real excited about some of this stuff. You know, like like this is the this is the chest strap. Now I was thinking how cool would this be at the ballpark running around the stadium. Everybody can kind of see what I'm doing. I thought that would be really cool. Um, and there's other there's other areas where I think we can use that in the vlogs. Um, again there's a wrist strap there's the head strap. Um, there's just so many cool things. I haven't even gone through all the little, just the, there's a selfie stick in here. It's, yeah, like first, yeah, it's first person views. So on some of the things that I'm doing that I can also be pointing the, the camera this way and also doing the, the doing the vlog. Um, so, which is really, really cool. So I'm pretty excited about these toys. Uh, and, and like I said, the good news is 20 bucks on Amazon. Now I get to figure out what I like, what I want to upgrade. Because um, I realized that this one here, like, I've seen this in the stores. This is very, I don't know, cheap. I can tell it's very cheap. Um, yes, I, I play on, tr the problem has been raining here with the hurricane. So I wasn't able to fly the drone at all. That's, that was part of it, too. I want to be able to do some more location sh uh, flying. Um, 
and really the drone has been I don't know if you watched uh, this past weekend I did a lot of drone flying um, there was a park over in southwest Greensboro I flew over did the, the waterfront and uh, so that was a really cool vlog um, and then also on that same vlog we end up going to a winery um, out in past uh, Winston-Salem um, area and I, I flew the drone over the uh, over the winery and stuff and that that was really cool too so um definitely check that uh, last saturday's uh, vlog out i think i think i even say something about wineries and dogs or it was bailey's birthday yeah, so if you check that vlog out uh, but yeah more drone stuff um definitely coming um and i have some drone accessories that i think in the next um go around here um i'm gonna get some uh, small things uh just wing clips to make sure the wings don't bend um and there's a couple other small little um just accessory pieces just to keep the uh, the equipment um up and going but i'll tell you right now if you're looking for a drone the spark is the way to go it is by far um it's so easy to use and most people well i notice people are a little hesitant around drones um so that drone, I think on just, if you just bought the drone, is like $650. I did the Fly More package, which was like $150 more, uh, but that got me um, the remote control, extra propellers, propeller guards, um, uh, what else did they get me? Uh, an extra battery, um, so you got you know, more flight time. Because um, that, that, that's the only downfall about the small drone, is there, your flight time is about 18 to 20 minutes, uh, but right about that five minute mark, the drone really wants to fly home and land um, because it doesn't want to be too far out and the battery die and then it just drops to the sky. So about the five minute mark, you need to start bringing it in. Now, I don't, I, I tend to be very cautious when flying it. I don't let it go out of my sight. I don't try to do crazy things with it. I try to just get my shot try to keep it away from trees and everything and it's always in my sight I eyesight so I don't screw it up and you know drop a $700 piece of equipment to the ground um, and I do get nervous so because some, sometimes you know you might get that hey lost connection and then it gets connection again but it's uh, very smart uh, DGI did an amazing job and because it's so small most people don't realize it or don't, don't aren't, aren't as scared by it um, it does go off a GPS, um, so it, it'll lock into your, your takeoff spot, and it knows. Uh, so, for instance, if I, if I do lose signal, it knows that the signal's been lost, and it flies up 100, 100 feet, and then flies to the location where you took off, and then it lands. Um, now, it's fine if you know that you didn't, uh, you know, there's no trees at that 100 feet area. Um, so that's a, that's a positive, but um, you definitely want to, make sure that the path that you take it on, because it's gonna come back the path that came from based on the GPS, that you weren't near anything that it could hit. But uh, it's a great drone, um, highly recommend it. Um, and it, it's it, actually, I'm, I'm also interested, maybe after the new year, because uh, GoPro has their their drone um, that also comes with their with their gimbal, three axis gimbal for the, for the GoPro. Um, and that gets about the same price as the, um, uh, the the DJI Spark, um, so you know maybe that might be something I get to play with as well. Because then I can shoot, because the the, um, the Spark only shoots um, in 1080, um, but with the GoPro I can shoot in 4K. So if I want to be able to upgrade to 4K footage on some stuff, um, it, having that um, that GoPro drone could be the the way to do it. And this way I don't have to buy another DJI product. But the the G, uh, the GoPro drone is not as smart as the DJI one. Um, <laughs> yeah, I you know I think it's a th like I think YouTubers, um, especially some, they they like showing that their drones crash and whatever because it gets them a lot of views. Um, and then they they're I mean even Casey Neistat for a while was you know losing drones in the in the Hudson River and I, he's actually in. Um, they're not really talking about it, but I know, I have a feeling, um, uh, it's being very low rap, uh, that's why he even says in his vlogs, you know, like, hey, FAA, I'm not, you know, I have permission, or, hey, I'm here, and that kind of stuff, um, 
I think uh, his drone was the one that was over by LaGuardia that hit the plane. Um, but it's not being, it wasn't really, it just said a drone hit the plane in LaGuardia. I think it was his. Um, so he's been very uh, pro drone safety, very careful. And he hasn't used, really hasn't used a drone, drone footage in any of his vlogs in a while. Because New York City's basically uh, um, a, a no fly zone. Uh, because it, it, of all the airplanes and terrorist threats and stuff like that. So drones are not very welcome in New York City. Um, I thought about bringing it to California, but I just didn't... I, I was worried about flying with it, getting through security and all that other stuff. I, I don't know. I think if I travel with it... I, and I, I was gonna... I can't take it to Disney because Disney doesn't allow drones, so there's no need to lose my drone by Disney confiscating it. So, uh, But I will uh, ultimately at some point... Uh, get some other, I don't know, maybe I'll take it with me and, you know, use the drone footage on the way back. Maybe we'll hit something on the way back that, uh, um, uh, from Orlando. Uh, well, it could be. Could be. I, I, I just feel that lately he's, Casey Nice has been very, in his blogs, very, uh, um, um, cautious about, uh, um, the drone and using it in New York City because I think the one time he used it he was like hey I'm not in New York City I'm in New Jersey and I'm on private property and a whole nine yards in the uh, in the vlog so but who knows who knows well I just that was it I just want to go on live because I haven't been editing I haven't been videoing because I've been trying to get work done um, so uh, I could be able to go off to Disney and have a good time and not have to worry about uh, doing work on that Friday so I just wanted to touch in with a live thing. I think I'm going to go to the room now, edit up one or more of those uh, California Disney vlogs. Um, wedding planning, a uh, quick little update on that. Uh, thanks for asking that. Um, everything seems to be at a, at a good point. Um, we are um, working on a photographer and uh, they are, I've been going in communication with them. Uh, I think as soon as we get back from uh, this trip, um, and actually we have another trip next weekend too, uh, we're going to uh, the Radford area of Virginia. I'll bring the drone. I'll bring the drone. You know what? I'll be able to fly that drone there. That's going to be, that's going to get some great shots of the mountains of uh, Virginia. Um, so that should be pretty because the leaves should be changing, changing colors too. So that should be some awesome footage. Um, and uh, so I'll bring the drone for that because we're going to a, uh, um, a Hokie, a Virginia Tech uh, football game. Uh, I might not be able to fly it on campus, but I can definitely get some shots um, around uh, around uh, the, the Virginia Radford um, Black Mountain area. Uh, but the wedding planning is going great. Uh, like I said, photographer is about the only thing we really need to nail down. Um, working on trying to figure out what, once we have them nailed down, I think we're going to do a quick little photo shoot, engagement shoot, um, put them on the uh, on the save the dates, which will go out probably at this point end of October, early November, right around Thanksgiving. We wanted to give some people some extra time, even though theoretically we have until, I think by ethics, uh, or whatever, not ethics, um, uh, yeah, uh, whatever the terminology is of uh, uh, code of conduct or the proper etiquette, etiquette, that's the word I'm looking for, etiquette, the proper etiquette we have until like right after New Year's. But I figured, like, with people with holidays and everything, and all of a sudden if you got something in the mail after New Year's, you'd probably lose it. So the thought would be if we get it out before Thanksgiving, then people can have it up on their refrigerator during the holidays and go, hey, look, they're getting married, or, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, so that's that's the plan there. Um, and uh, then pretty much same dates, wedding invitations. Um, we're, just, we're just cruising along. Uh, I know we've been working on what we want decor wise but even then I think we have a lot of time on that because uh, you really don't start getting hot and heavy into that I think until February or March when we get a little bit closer to knowing how many tables and guests and stuff like that but I have lots of ideas uh, of some I, I, I want to do a little bit of a giveaway so it's either going to be a wine glass or uh, something to do with corks or something I don't know it's going to be something cool um, since we're getting married at that winery uh, but yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna edit up a, a, a another Disney vlog from California. Um, I think I'm gonna make it three parts. So this part will be uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, um, 
Uh, well, thank you for tuning in for the, the your first uh, live watch. Uh, I just did it really quick. I wasn't sure how many people would uh, hop on the live. I'm sure a lot of people will watch this tomorrow morning, uh, get caught up on what's going on. Uh, but uh, in the morning or afternoon, I plan on at least having up that Disney vlog uh, of doing, I think it's Pirates, uh, Big Thunder Mountain, um, uh, I can't remember what else we did. The, Oh yeah, the jungle. I love the jokes on the on the Jungle Cruise. It's awesome. Uh, and then the last part will also be our um, uh, will be the fireworks and the end of the night uh, stuff. Um, so that would be so that'll be a three parts. And then we'll get into the stuff we did on Sunday and then Monday. Uh, and the Monday part in California might be two parts because we did so much stuff from the Labrera 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 Labrera. I can't say it now. Uh, tar pits. And we also did um, Sunset Strip and uh, the Chinese Theater, and so there's just that day was a was a busy busy day. Um, so that might be a, a two part uh, vlog. Just to, oh, because we also did the Queen um, Queen Mary uh, cruise liner that uh, was used during World War II to transport troops. Um, had tons of celebrities on it back in the day, from um, Houdini all the way up to. You, you name Fred Astaire. I mean, it's, I mean, it was really a, a popular uh, boat uh, for cruising. Uh, and so now it's docked uh, there, kind of in the, I don't know, it was the Huntington Beach area, um, Laguna Beach, somewhere in there. It's, it's docked. Um, and that was really cool doing the tour of that boat. Um, it was actually uh, the inspiration behind, behind the Posadin movie, the Pos Posadin Adventures um, from the 70s. So it was really cool. Uh, to see the, the dining room area, um, ballroom area, that kind of was the inspiration in that movie. Uh, if you remember that, with uh, Gene Hackman uh, was uh, was in that version. So, all right. Well, this is definitely. I'm definitely gonna wrap it up here, guys. So, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, and if you're watching this on uh, the you know non live, thank you so much for for watching. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, click the little subscribe button. Love to have you as a spaz, 24/7 subscriber, and spaz out.